Just put it right back. Okay, good. This Thank is you. in the context of loose change. I think we've done brilliantly, actually, from where we started. Um, the First Lady mentioning the military, your one page on solutions for connecting young people. I don't know where this goes, but I would love to see us think about the possibility of using the military as mentors in directly connecting young people, which gets to the rights and responsibilities of civic engagement and patriotism. But the mentoring in a community where it has been demonstrated is ultimately effective, I think, is the long-term sustainable hook that we might explore. I think we can respond to that by casting a wider net in terms of the definition of community. We the hope definition to really of? Community. Communities. We want to go beyond the traditional definition of community. Institutional contributors, military, these are all part of the matrix of the health and community agenda. So they're all going to be included. And we want to encourage these communities to think like that so there would be a platform for taking and incorporating those ideas in the, as we go forward. This is designed to be very organic and changeable as we develop more experience. Yeah. Others on the program effort? Maybe just, just to, it was said, but just to bring it to the highlight again, that um, what we're looking for are the characteristics. So when you were looking at that, it, it's, we're looking at programs, we're looking for initiatives, we're looking at a lot of different things, but we're looking at what is common, what are the basic characteristics that are needed. I think you have a sale here, wow. uh, bottom line. That, that, that's, that's amazing. And I, I think we could just call it the Catalyze team. You've catalyzed all of us already, so that's good. Um, I think that brings us to the communications team. Last and then, uh, then we'll kind of come back to a, a full discussion when we knit this back together and see whether we have something. We expect this presentation to be really snappy. I actually can't read it. In my, uh, it is my office. They can often decipher what I wrote, but I'm going to do my best to read my handwriting. The, uh, first off, we had a very spirited and great conversation. I mean, it's a tremendous group. So I think actually, we'll talk about resources, but I feel actually one place that we're actually going to be in good shape on really in our, in our group is, uh, is resources. And so much of what we discussed, I almost wish we were meeting now, because so much of what we didn't have on our plate is what the great work that the other two working groups have done. It worked in some, in some ways, you know, they tail wagging the dog. We communicate what you all decide. But, 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 if you, but if you wanted to start with a few things, I mean, so that our basic premise and how we will function and operate in thought process is that, you know, we, we're going to start with our objectives. Um, so what is the objectives of the organization? What do we want to accomplish? What are our goals? And then from there, we'll create our communication strategies, not before. And then from there, we'll create our communication objectives. Not, and then we'll create our strategies. And from there, we'll create our tactics. But to give you a sense of, so we have a lot of work to do once we decipher all these notes. But we have a framework from how to at least uh, begin and move forward. And, you know, our objectives are pretty simple. I mean, if one is to create a, um, what's the narrative? So what's our story? Why should people care? One of the most important, and, and how do you make it simple? Because when we communicate it, what is going to draw people in? And also, as part of that, what is our call to action? You know, what do we want people to do with this information? Do we want them to sign up? Do we want them to send us an email? Do we want them to you know, have a, you know, collective shared sacrifice? I mean, what, what are we asking them to do together? So we, we need a call to action. Um, so, our narrative and then the proof points under the narrative. And the proof points are everything from how are we going to do it to some of these great stories like we heard about Cincinnati. And I'm sure there's many, many more that we can add to that list. Um, branding. I think we all talked a little bit this morning about John's Project Hands idea. And I think in our group came to a consensus that that is absolutely <coughs> the way to go. That we, whether Project Hands is the right, uh, that's going to be our working name for now. We need to check it and see if it's you know, really take in whether it's the right idea, but to brand something around this idea so we can, it will really resonate um, with 
the communications tactics and tools we're looking at. Um, we need to do a real stakeholder mapping against our audiences so we can determine you know, who needs to hear what, how, when, and what, what channels. All of our tools are intended to be two <coughs> feedback mechanisms. This is not intended to be a monologue, but intended to be a dialogue. We want everybody's point. We want the community to tell us what they care about, what they need. You know, I'm a big fan of, you know, ask people what they want and then give it to them. So let's figure out what people need and what they want, and let's have all these tools be real two-way feedback mechanisms. So the objective would be, I mean, this is advertising, this is media relations, uh, it is uh, obviously a lot of social media, a lot of work on the web, and a whole variety of tactics that come from the uh, communications toolbox that we look forward to, you know, really employing them all, but to the right audiences with the right messages at the right time. Um, the, um, we talked a lot about in dialogue, about engagement, how are we going to engage people, and then um, in our process. I mean, we, you know, I, I want to talk about actually not make a decision today, but we need a process where we all stay engaged with each other. There are some very simple collaborative tools like Basecamp and others that we can talk about implementing for, um, so we can collaborate, we can you know, have real-time updates of information, newspaper articles, thoughts, whatever. Uh, I know we're going to implement something like that with our communications team, and we're fortunate enough, and I run a big public relations firm. Steve is, um, is chairman of a big public relations firm. We have John Bon Jovi, we have Starbucks. We have, so, we, we have so many people that have great resources, so part of us are going to, part of our goal, and really our next steps is to really identify um, the resources we have and how we can bring them to bear for the organization. So I actually feel like we're pretty good shape from a resource basis. We just need to figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. But this will be the basic framework from how we operate and the core goals of putting together uh, the communications program to make sure that what uh, our other two working groups have to say, you know, sings and resonates and is amplified in the community. So that was our meeting. Very good. So let me ask a very practical question of the communications group, which is, is it realistic to get a two-week deliverable of a short-term messaging? Because I think all of us are messaging, and even as Jim described, going on a beginning listening, you need to listen within some level of yeah. context and structure. So if we can um, <coughs> come to some level of a handshake here today, project hands-on, I'm going to keep using hands and all of it. We can do some level of handshake today about our common goal and, and some of these objectives. I, I would hope within a few weeks we could have a couple of things. One would be um, a more, uh, you know, take this narrative and actually um, you know, create really what is our elevator speech and then create some real narrative conversations that are all speaking from the same kind of group of words. I would also hope that we, so the answer is yes, the, I would also hope we create some type of rules of the road so we all know how we should be acting in communication, the key talking points and messages, how we, what, what needs to be approved, how, what doesn't need to be approved, how we all operate on the rules of the road. Uh, and then, and the third thing I want to try to do in the next few weeks is what is going to be our internal communication system between all of us. So uh, both as a whole organization and between the working groups. And if we can accomplish that all in the next two to three weeks, I think that'll give us a great foundation for which to move forward. So I, I would say we can get that done. Bravo. Bravo. Questions for the communications group? Steve, you just volunteer for all of <coughs> <just stay>. <laughs> Don't <laughs> close the yes. yes. Don't put your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> just cool. the Even the scratch. Yeah. Uh, other questions for them? Um, obviously, everyone in here is part of the communications team writ large. Uh, so now is your time. If there's resources you think you need to see, Bill? When will we have the benefit of the notes? <laughs> That's very important. That's very important, yeah. That really sort of establishes the, di the parameters for the discussion today. Well, um, Shiva is, is working as fast as she can. <laughs> and uh, our goal was to kind of revisit that two-page framework in a, in about 20 minutes and see whether or not uh, going back to some level of a agreement across a beta version of our top line goal and the three groups, do we think we have something that's emerging as a framework? There's lots of TBD. But, uh, and then the second part of it, which is the detailed notes, 
And Susanna, when can they have the detailed notes that captures the things on the slides and the overarching effort? And obviously, we have a record of, you could also watch yourself on the web stream again. It will be archived. <laughs> um, I think we could commit to a week from today. OK, so let, let's say in the next 10 days. Uh, I think that's very important so that we are literally reading off the same page because this will trigger reflections of this meeting and I can see that in front of my face. Which good. Good. Other, other questions on the communications effort? All right. We're going to try to print this and take a look at it. Let us, uh, we're printing 26 copies right now <laughs> and try to see whether we have, again, back to the two-page framework, not the place we'll end, but the directional agreement that we walked in here today and said we were going to uh, try to achieve. So there may be some things, I think sometimes just cutting things uh, that, that don't quite sit well as an answer. So we may do a little bit of group editing here, but mostly we want to do group um, holding hands, right? And just say directionally, this is where we all think we need to be going. So while Shiva may actually makes um, copies of that, I want to kind of pull the lens back a bit and talk about one resource that does concern me, which is if I, if I steal from John's um, uh, uh, descriptions, we also need a little backbone organization here. And um, I, I'm, I'm puzzling my way through that. Um, even the amount of uh, energy and capacity that you're identifying in your work groups still requires um, our own efforts to, uh, um, what, what were his three things? Strategic coherence, process facilitation, and data measurement and collection, and then obviously just the, the, the sheer logistics of getting this done. So um, it's not only what can your work groups do, but what, what will it take to pull coherence together on this end? So if anybody has any grand proposals about that, I, I'm all ears, and certainly Shivam will be a great assistant to me, a great assistance to me on the strategic end. And Susanna uh, is is certainly signed up for the logistics end. But we've got some work here to do uh, mm -hmm. to pull this off because the capacity that you all have identified in your individual groups is fabulous, but it does require coherence on the other end. Can you help guide us in terms of what the logistical requirements would be Best for the guess? work groups to work? Yeah, what do you need? Well, we need you to basically figure out how to get everything you just signed up for done. And then... Um, you need additional staff support? Oh, you mean here? Yeah. Um, well, it depends on what you're... Uh, so uh, I'm thinking more about how do you make sure that the segmentation done here mm. uh, serves the stakeholder work done there, which serves the outreach and validation efforts done here. So, Jim? But just by way of maybe a very specific example, just so that we can see if we know what we're talking about. We're all about the same thing. Let's say that we do move forward with three of these listening sessions in yeah. three cities. That requires uh, <coughs> council members to attend. The it, it requires messaging, a, a framework of discussion, which will come out of uh, uh, looking at kind of the characteristics of other initiatives that work on you because know, you want to go in and form. It probably requires uh, John, because he said he's not going to let us go anywhere without a lawyer. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Susanna would probably be going, if, if you do three of these, I can imagine somebody going, and then Susanna is going means she's not doing whatever the other stuff back here she's doing isn't good. You know, so it's it's all of that. Just one little initiative that on the surface looks pretty simple. And then I'm thinking, you know, if you hold a kind of a town hall discussion, there's costs in that mm -hmm. from a uh, having a venue perspective, and I think our budget may be zero. So we have to work through. You know, could we use? You know, if we did New Orleans. You know, can we use Tulane? Use Tulane can go uh, through a paperwork process to call that a contribution. Can we use New York as well as a big? I think that's what you're trying to get to. What, what can? Yes. What are the realities? Yeah. 
that yes, and I think that um, Susanna can sign up for the process facilitation up to a certain I'm just quantity. Carol. <laughs> um, is that right? Process and logistics. I love her, but, she, um, but you were saying, I you know, we got to get the easy. messages right, the she capture right, etc. And we've got some capacity in that, but we're a little bit light. So if we can take some of this offline. But I want to identify for you that I'm still a, a little bit concerned about what you'll look back to the council uh, to ensure is done in a strategically coherent as well as logistically coherent way. We have a little bit of resources for some of the things like the logistics. Um, we have a, a partnership with a, um, a group of consultants that will help us with the logistics. I, I would say the strategic coherence worries me more than any, and we can, we can again, take some of that up. I mean, at a level, what I'm also hearing a little bit is a call for perhaps for some volunteers. Absolutely. For and so that maybe what some of us can do is think about if we have some capacity we could loan to the council. And I think that if each of our organizations could think if we've got some, some human capital that we could. And again, uh, I don't think they need to move to the corporation, but we no. need strategic assistance you need some and help. some level of facilitation coming to a town near you facilitation assistance, assistance, et cetera, so that we can go as fast as these work groups have identified, which I think is what we, we all want to do. We want to come back here in June with some real work done. Without getting too, too global, I think, I think we're on the right track with, if we could regionalize some of the work, you know, and, and I don't know what that means, if it means like four different areas that we tentative are looking at are regions, and we won't get to the place, and it'll be easier for a lot of us to attract resources to do that. It's true. Um, we talked about that earlier, which is the idea that if, if you decide you're going to do five of your top places in California, there's so many place-based resource providers right. that we, we have a challenge. OK, that's good. I just wanted to float that. Other issues while we get this uh, common plan? Only to make sure that when we collect these this stuff from these various meetings, it has to, has to go someplace. Yeah. I want to make sure that who's and we, We'll have the uh, catcher's mitt out here to ensure that and with that's, <laughs> we'll have to figure that out. But I agree with you. It has to. Yeah. There's no need. We'll be wasting people's time. The last thing we want to do is reach out to communities and waste their time if we're not going to utilize that information to help make our decisions better. And I'm also saying that, that if you need help from a resource standpoint, we're your committee. We're prepared to help you think that through. Okay. So that everybody's clear about where I'm going with this. Okay. We don't want to see this great work compromised because you don't have two staff people to Good. carry this forward. Okay. But well, we're going to need that. So again, if each of the groups can identify the resources to get their objectives done, and then we'll identify the resources to bring coherency to those between. Um, other other thoughts as you think about where we started the day and the approaches that we wanted to take. Judith, going back to your issue, are we sufficiently grounded oh, in I think the- we've, we've definitely really um, taken the, both the bottom up and the assets based as well as the needs based approach. I don't think there's anything that sounds sort of doing to them and all of the things that we're hearing. The one piece that I don't feel resolved from the morning conversation is a line of sight on, I, I know there's some in our book, but a line of sight on the government programs. And so there's lots and lots and lots of money being spent. And for the effectiveness group in particular, if we could just understand how much is being spent, have there been any analyses, are there existing data about their effectiveness, because one thing in thinking about community-based solutions might be ways to make the already existing government programs land in a way that's more effective. Mm -hmm. And course. unless we have a line of sight on mm -hmm. what they are and things about them, I'm not sure we're going to be able to accommodate that really important piece Absolutely. where virtually 90% of the resources currently are. So, so the, the, let me just turn very specifically to Byron and ask whether he's willing to add that to the list of the business case issues, which is where the federal, I mean, the, this, this issue of resource alignment also touches that, right? So, so the, I, I think the, uh, the piece that the effectiveness team can take on there 
is, is, is sort of a business case for the taxpayer. I think what would be harder for us to take on is like literally, you know, the 370 programs, like which are effective in which way. You know, we could set a sort of framework for how would you assess, right? I mean, how would you assess the effectiveness but in terms of actually doing that assessment? I for think me, it was a resource hard. question. I don't think we can do it. So are there resources currently in the government and so or data I, currently in the government that would allow us to know that? Is Sonal still here? She John, was probably not. John, you know the answer to that. Wait, wait. Well, uh, just let me answer your question that Sonal mentioned this morning after this was brought up, uh, that the same effort and the same team that is working on the salmon treated out of 14 agencies, uh, perhaps that we could facilitate this as a priority mm -hmm. effort around. Um, that's what, and, uh, um, you, you must know who that is. Jeff Sines, yeah. That's right. Um, Michelle, can you say something? Jeff Sines. Yes. Yeah. This we is could, the government could. reorganization. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And if, if perhaps we could facilitate um, and and uh, advocate for having this category of federal activity and spending on there. That's good. John. So it might accelerate. It's a little old, but I, I co-chaired a White House task force on disadvantaged youth, and we looked at this issue, and that's where the 339 federal programs and 224 billion dollars came from, and whether it's Patrick or the person you mentioned, um, it's a 2003 report, but it at least will give us so a baseline running start. To start. Baseline start. Perfect. The second thing mm -hmm. we discussed, to Judy's point place. though, is that it might even be more helpful, would be to look at the government programs within that suite and then those that have been created since that actually catalyze community innovations right. and solutions around this population. And then what are the circumstances and conditions in those programs and then to find that we want to do that in advance of the community listening sessions because we want to ask the communities like Strive and others, what's your connection, if in any, to these federal programs? What are the opportunities? What are the barriers, as, as Byron said? Asking so the I think question. some of that work has to be done before we go into our communities. That's, that's a very, very good point. And if I understood, Michelle, which group are you in? Effectiveness. So, okay, I'll, so you'll yeah. help us with that because you know. Yeah, and, and I know Jeff too. Good. Mm -hmm. That'd be super. I think that's very good. The 2003 and, and what the, is going on there. Um, did I see uh, Nancy? And then we'll move to trying to see whether we have a Diana. shared Diana. And Diana. Okay. Uh, Nancy. I'm putting mine down. Okay. Diana. And one area that we didn't talk about a lot, and it could be that it's beyond our scope, except I think in the solutions area. Um, it's going to be necessary to talk about is role of state and local governments. Um, as we catalog federal governments, we know that any number of programs that firstly get matched at a state level, uh, that there are certain states that may take initiative or local communities. And I don't know how we fold it in, but it seems to me that when we talk about the targeted 50 communities, wherever they are, that implicit in that has to be a backroom connection or a direct connection directed that um, that we engage in those state and local governments as part of the solution. It's true. That's a very good point. That actually came up in our group. And we concluded that the best strategy for the communities would be to invite public officials to the community meeting rather than have them drive the community meeting. It would be a very different dynamic. Very different. And it would uncouple it from some particular political agenda by a public official if the community group drove the process and included them, as we would veterans and other constituencies. But I might say also that it, it, it begs asking when you're out there, which is what is the role of the, of the, of the mayor, the, the county, the X, right, in these solutions when you're going out, Jim Wright, and, and talking to those that, that work. So, and then the, the second thing that I want to say is that in um, this council has been um, appointed by the president who belongs to a particular party. Michelle brought up in one of the work groups, I understand, the question of the limited time before the elections start in earnest. It seems to me that if this effort is to be successful, we have to be intentional, intentional about in recruiting people who are on both sides of the political divide who are publicly respected within their respective parties and to get a lot more Republicans to be publicly identified with this activity early on so that it doesn't run into the crosshairs of not a year, it's more like eight months before we get there. Very good. I think that can be a communications group. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
want the talk of Jeff, and I think that's a very We'll get Glenn back on board. <laughs> yes. Well, now you're going a little far. So uh, I, I, I promise you that we would, that we would work hard and try to come um, out of here with a common sense of purpose and some direction on where we're going. So if we could, if you look at the screen, we have a little printer problem. We'll talk about little backbone issues here, but we have a little printer problem, which we'll have. The, the, red, the red are the major changes. I believe we could probably cut a lot from this, but we came in with a purpose and a focus, which we kept. The problem uh, uh, was needed to be extended very specifically by the well-intentioned community problem um, that we spoke about, which is lots of activity, not a whole lot of... Uh, of uh, collaboration and coordination against key metrics and, and the constrained resources are a challenge. Um, but let's move down, most importantly, to the goal. Uh, again, we may want to just reduce the number of things we talk about here. <laughs> Sometimes it's easiest just to get to the goal. Um, this is the goal. Out-innovate, uh, out-educate, out-build with the rest of the world with this context in mind. This uh, council, not commission, important edit, will catalyze changes and place the spotlight on initiatives that connect one million or more disconnected youth to educational and career pathways by 2020, with 50 plus diverse communities leading the way. Michael? You know, I like it very much. I, don't, I, I would actually recommend swapping, you know, have the communities before the number of you because this, you know, we are the community solutions groups. This isn't about catalyzing communities will we'll then impact these million youth. So I like it. I would just sort of put that first and have the youth second. Other, other thoughts about that? Good. Nods in general. And so the wordsmithing communications group will help us get that. But I think the key here is does this get to the essence of what we want this council to be assessed by, that, that we decide our service, our effort, our contribution was was the right one. David? You know, we also really need to test it. I mean, with some communities that we can really get 50, that, you know, if we tested three communities and found out we were off base a little bit, we need some feedback, because we're, we're making some assumptions about communities that may or may not be true. But, but given, you know, given what we know today, does it feel right? And I agree with you that one of the processes we need to sign up with is push this over the next two or three months enough to see whether or not it's doable doable but a stretch we don't want Co it, correct we don't want something simple uh, okay behind you behind you oh i'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I think it's fine the one thing that that's just i i want to i want to put out there is that we talk about connecting one million or more disconnected youth um i guess when i think about 2020 it makes me think that at some level it'd be interesting if we could find a way to look at what percentage of young people are disconnected and look at reducing the percentage of young people who are disconnected. So I think sometimes we use a numeric goal. Um, it's possible that we could have five million disconnected youth by 2020, and we've helped a million, we're back at four million. Like I think that at some level, you know, I don't know exactly how to do that, and can't, I don't think we'll figure that out today, but I think we look at how do we reduce the percentage of young people who are in that category of disconnected. That's right. if, if, uh, if just through population change, 37 and a half million in that cohort is going to change to 42. You can do a million. Yeah, it's getting late. I think that's, that's, right. my point. that's where I say we have some parens that, uh, that we'll work off so, so that we hold ourselves to Figure that out. Okay. Very good. Nancy? On that point, maybe percent by community where there's real incentive for the community. So we'll, we'll, we'll work. I think we basically have agreements and we're down to making it real making sure it's doable but a stretch and then wordsmithing it to where it really signals everything we want yeah. you have no anybody industry. going going this is the goal uh and again we will we will send this around to you in the in the coming weeks as we work on it more so um uh, to deny me a focus can you pull this down all the way down all the way down okay the edits to values and beliefs we, we pulled some out you can't see the ones that were pulled out but in red Again, anchored in the youth are assets, and we will brace them and learn from young adults. They own the change. Remember to keep in mind the concept of relevance, and we'll be active listeners and learners from those leaders and organizations providing top solutions. Those were critical. Uh, is that all on the values? Could you make sure that I can see them? Yeah. Then let's go to the, uh, the second column, which is the 
additional actions, connect and leverage partners already working in the space, foster mechanisms that will institutionalize our recommendations. This is the idea of it's not good enough to be done in uh, the fall of 2012. If there's not unstoppable momentum, we have not served our, our council purpose. The next column was the, I'm just going to go through all of these real quickly so that we, can we just pull it, yeah, okay, mobilization. Speak now. Establish narrative, proof points, articulate the call to action. Keep this group connected as we work together. Those were the two top line. Does that sound fair, Michael? Yeah. With some edits? Effectiveness. Uh, keep going down for effectiveness. I hope we got some of <laughs> Oh, I see. You, you actually wrote our goal statement, and then you went immediately to your yeah. goals. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the goals for communications. I, I almost need to run this mouse because I'm losing. I'm further refine our brain. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, can I probably Yeah. Um, I'm going to do this. <laughs> Empower yourself, Patty. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this, this does get, I mean, they forced it into the frame, and we've right, got to do right. this a little bit better. But let's keep talking about uh, communications. Further refine the branding, develop the stakeholder map. Can I just make one little? Yeah. I, mean, I, I think it's about, it's further refine our narrative. I mean, the branding will come from the hearing. Mm -hmm. Narr narr okay. It's really the narrative. Okay. And then I think it's, or, or it's narrative slash branding, both. So I would do that. Good, good. And then the actions, top level talking points, actions to be the things we get going right away. Elevator pitch, articulate rules of the road, identify resources we have against our stated goals. And in uh, the communications group wins the uh, blue ribbon for the fast schedule sign up, right? <laughs> Um, well, by March to yeah, but, by March. Uh, but in March. In March. <laughs> okay. I consider March to run all the way to the end. Okay. So yes, but, uh, so in, in March. <laughs> <laughs> so effectiveness. Um, walk me through this, Byron. So it's the the deliverables. Yeah. The time frames. This most <laughs> important, right? National metric scorecard adopted. It's left over from the prior one. It was your deliverables. Right. Help calculate the return on investment. Develop yeah. action plan. So the the, uh, the June deliverables were the the, the, the goals and the yeah. metrics with, with the segmentation, um, uh, yeah, the right. business case yeah. for uh, stakeholders, <laughs> and then a detailed action plan for the next Good. 18 months. Good. And it's just a matter of what we put in actions versus what we put in goals. Right. Is, is that, right. Then catalyst. Community-led, community-owned, sustained community connectedness for engaging you. I think that might be bottoms up, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least. Um, with identify effective collaborations that are multi-sector, three to six listening sessions, design and develop platform for community connectedness, deploy plan and select XX communities, integrate work of other working groups, and launch national hands-on initiative. Again. Um, all of those except for the national hands-on initiative, no, except for the last two, were, were up to June and then following June, right? This, I think, again, we should go back up here because we, get, we can get mired in the what's a goal and what's an objective and say, generally, I think we came to the agreement that this was our goal, with the focus on communities 50 plus leading the way, catalyze change to ensure that we connect 1 million more or 25% more of our disconnected youth to educational and career pathways, maybe faster than 2020. I think 2020 seems a really long time from now, but we'll know when we start to push the numbers around. Well, it partly depends, you know, the, uh, on what you mean by that 1 million number. If you if you mean it as in a steady state, there's four million and there'll be a million fewer. Um, then I think 2020 is probably about right. If what you mean is you cumulatively will put a, a, a million in, then I think you could do it. So it should aim to do it sooner than that. Byron, can we also see the effect that that would have on the president's goal of where we rank in terms of college attainment in the world? Other thoughts in terms of getting, again, 
agreement on the goal and then directional agreement on where we're headed in the next year. I think the groups did fantastic work. Is there anything at the center and or in the groups that you think we need to uh, ensure we walk out of here agreeing to? Patty, I don't want to wordsmith this, but just want to reconcile a value that we have about kind of looking at the assets that our youth bring and then language in the goal that really kind of focuses on disconnected youth. I don't have the solution, and I know that conceptually we probably all agree with this, but if there's a way to somehow have the goal read in a more kind of aspirational asset orientation rather than kind of talk about the deficit, I think that would be great. Again, I don't have an answer, but if there's general consensus that that would be more consistent with the value that we mm -hmm. agree to, then maybe smarter people who can wordsmith it could come up with something. Yeah, that's good. I think I think you're getting lots of agreement yeah, around the table, right. and uh, and basically we're all saying we we lock into the objectives that are embedded in that goal. We'd like the language to be aspirational and recognize Asset. that you have assets. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. Very good. Paula, I was really um, persuaded by Scott's earlier comment around the unique role that universities play in attacking this problem. So I was wondering whether in our mission statement we should specifically call out universities. Up in the, up in the, the, in the mission oh, statement. Oh, absolutely. Very good. In fact, it, it's absent uh, education sector in general. Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, I, I did a lot of that in the middle of the night with Michelle with multiple kids yeah, uh, coming around to the next that. round of it. So yeah. We missed a few things. Well, go to right. 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 You know, Gary, though, I do think that um, yeah. if you look at this marketplace, too, the community colleges are probably as big of a, maybe even bigger, bigger. Yeah. bigger play in that. So I think, I don't know how the language should read. Educational secondary education. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. And or valuable service. I guess they're all post secondary. They all post secondary. Yeah. Post -secondary. Yeah. Post -secondary. Yeah. Good. Well, um, what I would like to do is just go back again uh, to the beginning, just for a minute. We agreed when we started that the reason that we're here is this president's belief in all hands on deck and the idea that all citizens, all sectors, including these youth uh, with their assets, or especially these youth with their assets, are part of creating the kind of nation that we want to see, the change that we need to see, and that our goal was to figure out how to harness that knowledge that all hands on deck is the only way to go uh, in service um, and in partnership with the youth uh, to ensure their connectedness. So I really do believe that we brought a lot to the table. We worked really, really hard uh, for this day. And um, I think we signed up to very ambitious work for the four months ahead. And I, I really appreciate that, because I knew we would work really hard today. But the level of commitment that you've shown in what each of the work groups has signed up for um, is, is really quite impressive. And I can tell you that I know that uh, from the standpoint of the corporation, Patrick and Susanna, and from my um, standpoint, and I know from the leaders of the work groups, that we will really work to keep you engaged and keep you uh, in service to these objectives over the next few months because um, the time is short that we have to work on this and the need is, is large. And uh, the one thing I would ask you very much is that you, that you, besides what we assign to you, you actually really try to personally take the time <coughs> to connect in your community uh, to either the kinds of leaders that we met last night in Tanisha or, um, or, or the kinds of youth that Kristen sees every day trying to build their own assets and their own uh, careers and their own um, education initiatives in order to ensure that our work <coughs> stays very, very grounded in the kind of uh, issues 
that are the reality of those facing the front line. So again, sitting in this beautiful room in this historic place, I think we got great work done. I know we're gonna wait for the notes, but can we get that here. sent to us right away? Um, we actually have it for you here. It'll electronically, um, it'll electronically get distributed. Uh, but, but here it is, so that you're going home on the plane with something more. <laughs> uh, but we do believe in the digital world, so we will uh, actually get, sure. get that going too. Uh, uh, so with that, I'd ask for last questions, and then we'll turn it over to Susanna um, for the official close. Again, my thanks to you uh, for all of, of the work and good thinking that went into trying to get us directionally in alignment and organized, semi-organized, <laughs> for, the, for the months ahead. And stay grounded and staying grounded in the work. Last Patty, thoughts? Patty, please. nice job to you for growing yeah. the yeah. way I turned this out for you. Thank you right. so much. If you can corral the 28 of us, we should be able to tackle this problem. <laughs> well said. Anything else? As Susanna, as our designated federal official, take us out. This might be the only presidential council to end early. Woo! <laughs> 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 and so thank you for your, your wisdom, your passion, and your patience. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>